with you. Current system and school performance. How are Monroe County schools performing against other school districts in the state of Georgia? Student goals after graduation. We will be highlighting individual students at Mary Persons High School and their aspirations after high school throughout the presentation. Focus areas over the next five years. What areas do we need to concentrate on over the next few years to ensure continued improvement and success for our students? Addressing challenges or barriers for the future. Are there things that exist or that could exist that could slow down progress or hinder school system improvement as we move forward? And finally, ensuring collaboration and cooperation among school, school stakeholders. It is imperative that all of us, as school and community stakeholders, work together to help provide an educational experience that helps ensure success for our students, which in turn will help promote success for our community, for our state, and ultimately for our nation. <coughs> How well are Monroe County School students performing right now? To get a snapshot of how we're performing, uh, we'll take a look at the following indicators today. Our performance on Georgia's College and Career Rating Performance Index, called CCRPI. Our performance on Georgia's School Climate Ratings. Mary Persons High School and Monroe County Schools graduation rates. Career Technical and Agricultural Education Offerings, or CTAE. And then Pass After Graduation. What are options for our children uh, after graduation as they move on in their lives. CCRPI, right, as I said, the College and Career Ready Performance Index is Georgia's tool for annually measuring how well schools, systems, and the state are helping students achieve their goals. The data provided in this score, or these scores, are used by parents, educators, and community members to promote college and career readiness for all Georgia students. The index generally measures the performance in the following areas. Content mastery, progress, and closing gaps, and then finally at the high school level, graduation rate. The next chart shows how our school system as a whole and each individual school performed last year against the state averages. We are extremely proud that our system and all schools in the system exceeded the state averages. This speaks volumes about the work and dedication of our students, parents, teachers, <coughs> leaders, and the entire community. As they say, it takes a village. And we have a supportive village in Monroe County, as with your attendance today shows that. This next slide uh, shows how our system performed uh, against other school systems across the state. We are pleased to report that our system ranks 19th out of 192 school systems in the state of Georgia. <laughs> this puts the performance of our students and school district in the top 10% of systems across the state. This is the highest ranking that Monroe County Schools has seen under the current CCRPI process for evaluating student and school performance. The fact that only three systems scored at 90 or above on this index might alert state and le legislative leaders, <laughs> and Mr. Dick is here today, that maybe the score process might be, need to be revised or changed a little bit. We love a balanced way of looking at it, but when you got, if you can't see all 192 of them, but you got Forsyth County, Jefferson City, and Buford City, the only ones that made over a 90, maybe there's something wrong. And they, the highest they had was a 91.7. Just say, just say. So that may be something that our whole state, because I know education in the state of Georgia is better than three, three schools having what we perceive as an A. I'll just say it, our three systems having an A. All right, uh, another way that the state of Georgia determines if a school is on the right path for school improvement is through Georgia's school climate ratings. These ratings include stakeholder perception surveys, student discipline, safe and drug-free learning environments, and student and staff attendance. As you can see, every school in Monroe County received the highest rating for school climate. This is the first year that all five schools have received the highest rating, and Mary Persons is the only high school in Middle Georgia to receive a five-star climate rating. Congratulations, Mary Persons. We will have uh, data for a financial efficiency 
rating that will come out after Christmas. Uh, this measure looks at the comparison uh, per student spending against overall performance, and that will be for each individual school, and I think we'll have those out in either January or February. Now, uh, all the accolades that we've just talked about uh, for student staff performance on CCRPI, Georgia Milestones Assessments, and School Climate are wonderful. But our primary mission each day is to motivate and inspire a passion for learning in our students so they can all grow, learn, and succeed. Success for us is defined through producing students who have the knowledge and skills to be successful in a global environment. How does, that look at each, how does that look each day in our classrooms? Simply put, that means providing each of our students with a rigorous, relevant, and enjoyable curriculum in a safe and loving environment every day. If we continue to do that, we are confident that results on state and national assessments will take care of themselves. At this time, I would like to have Anna Hightower uh, join me up front. Come up, Anna. Anna is a senior at Mary Persons High School this year, and she is also our resident sports and school broadcaster. She enjoys interviewing students and staff and looks forward to what her future might hold in this area. Anna put together the student interviews that we'll actually see throughout the presentation today, and she actually interviewed herself kind of here, so we're gonna start with that, but let's give her a big hand for her work and what she's doing. Here. The only numbers in that graduation rate for the four years is you've got 
enroll it in the fall of your ninth grade year and the summer of the graduation year, which is four years. So uh, we try to keep that in mind, but you know, that sounds like a lot, uh, but we do have 15%, which if you think about that, that's probably about 45 <coughs> students or children that we didn't get across that finish line. So it's important to us to think about each individual child and making sure that we find ways that every child can be successful and graduate in four years. All right, uh, Anna's first interview here is with senior Austin Wiggins. So at this time, let's hear from Austin. Because 
we, we feel like we try to make sure every kid has an opportunity for a successful life. And that means when we say every child, we mean every child. And we hope that we can uh, increase that graduation number and increase folks going into the world of work moving forward. Uh, Anna's next student interview uh, is with senior Savannah Martin. <coughs> Teaching going on in the classroom, 
but yet having folks that engage and love kids because at the end of the day, that's what parents want. I mean, I know when I brought my kid, dropped my kids off at school, I wanted to make sure they were safe and they were going to have a good day and they were going to learn. And basically, that's simply put, that's what we want every day. All right, our final interview uh, today is with uh, Daniel Lavelle, who is a, a senior football player. And uh, we kind of have conduit and around that we communicate 
And at the end of the day, tax money is tax money. If we can work together to be more efficient, provide better opportunities for our students and our citizens and our overall community, I think the community would love that. So I look forward to growing those partnerships. Chamber's wonderful uh, conduit for us to make sure that things are happening positive for our school system. So I think that's the next steps for us to continue on making sure that we're successful. Our focus areas moving forward, and some of these kind of overlap, but these are things that uh, principals, they, they hear this all the time, they're probably going to sleep, but we, we focus on things that we need to focus on, and it may sound basic, but to me, I'm, I think the KISS principle a lot of times gets bypassed in whatever you do. Keep it simple, stupid. If, if you see where there's a problem, address it, and do the things that you need to do to continue being successful. Uh, We've got to be able to align our student class offerings and skill development with local, state, and national markets. Our school system needs to be in collaboration with local and state workforce development to help ensure opportunities for students and for our local community. Business and industry tend to gravitate to areas where they can find a qualified workforce. If we are, and we're doing a great job of doing that better, the economy's better right now, but we've got to make sure that we have a workforce for businesses and industry that comes here to Forsyth, and we're committed to being able to do that. Offering different options to support student graduation. Um, I say that we've got, you know, every, every child, Mary Persons High School main campus is not the perfect place. Some people just can't function in that environment. Sometimes we have kids that actually attend the Achievement Center. It's a smaller environment and they're more successful in that area. We actually have children nowadays that actually, by law, you can complete your studies online. And they prefer just to do their studies online and kind of check in and out with the school. I think the brick and mortar buildings that you see these days, uh, I probably will see less and less of them, quite frankly, uh, moving forward because of technology. Uh, because of the different opportunities that will be available for students and for schools and for colleges and for all educational processes moving forward. So we just got to make sure that we've got the right seat for every kid. And that speaks to that, you know, we got that 15% that we didn't get. So how are we going to, what things are we going to be able to do differently to be able to include them to make sure that they're successful in life? Because if they're successful, it's going to help the entire community. It's going to help the entire state because if they're not successful, they won't have a job. You know, they may end up in jail or in prison, and it's incumbent upon us to make sure that those things are taken care of. Collaboration, excuse me, hiring and retaining best and brightest teachers and teachers lead, teacher leaders. We talked about that. It's just we've done everything. We, we try to go to different colleges and universities, different states, uh, to make sure that we are trying to. Uh, get the best folks to come to Monroe County and be able to keep them. And uh, our reputation speaks a lot, but when you're in a, a big shortage like we are now, sometimes that doesn't hold as much water as it used to because if there's nobody in math, it doesn't matter how good you are doing in math. I mean, we, we leave Middle Georgia and a lot of areas in high school, but if there are no available candidates, sometimes that's difficult to fill positions. And the collaboration with local and state partners, we talked about that. I keep going back to that, I think the people in this room, and it's not just people here, but we've got a core group in our community that are committed to moving our uh, citizens, our students, uh, moving our town and our county forward. And I think that continued work that we're doing from the mayor, city council, uh, to county commissioners, uh, to state legislators, to fire department, police department, sheriff's office i think all that makes a difference for us being successful together i think if we do it again in those silos we we, we can be successful i think together we're, we're more powerful and i think we need to continue to do that have events like this continue one monroe uh, the joint city county meetings that we're doing and do more projects together to understand what each person or each area is doing so that we can work together to provide more for our citizens <laughs> And then finally, ensuring funding uh, to provide for future needs. Uh, what, what just changed at the state level? We got a new governor. Well, he's promised everybody that in education they're going to get a $5,000 raise, I think. So, our teachers. So, we got to see how that shakes out. 
what does that mean for local funding, state funding, uh, federal funding, uh, and so we got to make sure in order to provide the, the best things for our kids, we got to have the money to do it with, and we'll just see how that goes over the next few years. We're confident. Uh, the state's been very supportive of us over the past few years, and we're very thankful for that. But that always is evolving and changing, and we're just, we always like to pay attention to that because we're incumbent upon, just like city, county, we have to have the funding to go do what we need to do for our kids. All right. Uh, finally, uh, we're looking at, is that the last one you had? All right, what are our challenges for uh, uh, education in Monroe County? This is the final uh, thing that I'll talk about today. What are, what are some things that can be barriers for us? What is student growth? Uh, our county is growing. We have a lot of houses being built. We've got business and industry coming, and we've got to pay particular attention to our student numbers over the next few years. We have a lot of, we've got some room for growth, but I think you know, we've always said it could come. I just got that feeling that it's coming. And uh, we've got to be able to be prepared for that and be able to handle that growth uh, as it comes to our county. Upgrading current schools and facilities. I think one of the things that we're committed to doing, we've got great facilities, but we've got work we need to do on facilities that we have. And in the next uh, few years, we're going to work on existing things in the system and make sure, like Mary Persons, we need to do a lot of work there. Uh, we'll be doing that soon. Uh, I was the first senior to graduate at, at the, our new, and that was in 1984, so that tells you how old I am. But it needs a lot of work. It's, it, it's, got, a good, it's got a good framework, but it's 34 years old. I mean, so we've got a lot of work that needs to be done there. We're gonna be working on that. We've got to make sure with the issue with our William Hubbard campus and then the uh, Bank Stevens campus from Monroe County Middle School provided a, a space for classrooms and instruction there. And so we've got a lot of work that we need to do over the next few years with that. Again, that flexibility for our kids is important. We've got to find something that fits everybody and that's hard to do. It's just like with CTAE, it costs a lot of money to run a program. We'd love to have all 18 pathways, but in order to do that, you've got to have a teacher and a program and a place for them to go. And you know, you've got to have enough kids in there to want to be able to do that financially. So that's why we're trying to look at different options to be able to provide as many things as we can for our students. And then uh, funding student and staff needs is important. We talked about that again. And then finally, growing partnerships with city, county, and state. In closing, I'd like to thank you again for being here today and supporting the work of our school system. We are truly blessed. We have a knowledgeable, understanding, and supportive Board of Education. We have wonderful students and parents who are passionate about education, participation, and engagement at all levels. We are lucky to have such great community support. Our community loves our schools and our school system, and it shows. We also have support from our state and local officials who know that our community, our region, and our state will be more successful with a high-performing school district in Monroe County that is focused on improving educational outcomes uh, and ensuring success for all children. We thank you for being here. I've got just a little bit of time for a couple of questions that you might have uh, regarding the school system and our future. Uh, so if you anybody has anything that they'd like to ask or comment, now would be a good time to do that. Anybody have anything? Mr. Andrews. I would like to commend you, Superintendent Hickman, for reaching out into the community and making everyone aware of what the school system is doing and trying to do. You've got a very good outreach program and your staff development has been very good. Hope you continue to do that. And myself and Bill Wilson, we are on the Workforce Development Board, and that 15% that falls through the crack, we're trying to reach out to them, right. get them back to school, get them a GED. We've got a lot of money available. Okay. We've got to do more. We you know kind of who they are. It's just making sure that we get the right conduit and put them in the right place to do. Because, you know, I, I hope I would hope that every kid would get a 100% graduation rate. But my, but my heart knows that probably not going to be 100% ever. But even though if you don't, there's a place that you can go get a job. You can get a GED. 
you can have a future. And I think that's what we all want as a community, is that everybody can, can fund themselves and fend for themselves. And I think that's what we want to make sure. Well, as I get older, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm an educator first, but I'm a daddy and just a community member. That's what you want to see. You just want to see people that, 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 that can be successful in whatever that is. And that looks different for different people and different families. So, uh, yes, and we appreciate all the support we get from Hubbard alumni and the actual county commissioners. And uh, we're, we're excited for things to come. I think we're doing a good job of, of meshing some of our different uh, processes in the county. Any other questions, comments? Thank y'all. Did you enjoy lunch? Did you good? Chamber? We took over the chamber last night. The uh, holiday, hometown holiday was wonderful. Great job.